Hi and I welcome you to this lecture. In my previous lectures, I explained about directory information tree and its building blocks. Now putting it all together, let's design a sample directory structure with object classes and attributes we have seen in my previous lecture. Any directory structure will start from its base DN. It's the root where we can create our first entity. This base DN will be created during our LDAP configuration. Now let's see how this base DN is created. While configuring LDAP, we will be asked for public DNS name of the server where we set up LDAP. Once we give this name, LDAP will split it with dot as delimiter. Each of the splitted value will have an entity using domain object class. And it has DC attribute as RDN. Here DC is an acronym of domain component. LDAP does all these things for us. Only thing we have to provide is public DNS name. In this example, this will be the base DN created by LDAP server. Now our first entity will be created under this base DN. For simplicity, let's consider example.com as our DNS name. LDAP will split it and the entity will be created like this. Now let's design a direct structure for our organization which has presence in multiple geographical locations. So we are branching out to two country object classes. Then one organization is present in each locations. So we are branching out accordingly. Each organization has two organization unit object classes. One for people and other for group. Each people OU has two users created with POSIX account object class. And each group OU has two categories, dev and system admin. UAD of the people can be added to dev or sys admin group. By this we are assigning each user to a group. I will be giving a demo on this in coming lectures. You will understand this even better at the time. This is just a sample structure of a directory tree. The actual design of a directory tree can be influenced by number of factors. Few are like if an enterprise has its presence in more than one geographical locations, appropriate branching has to be done. And this has to be planned on design phase itself. Another example is, if a directory structure is designed for a simple storage and data references, then its design would be different. Else if it is used for different applications, for authentications, then its design would be a different one. The type of replication mechanism we implement will also play a role while designing a directory. Though LDAP has number of built-in object classes, while designing definitely we will require customized object classes and attributes based on our requirement. In LDAP, we can configure such customized object classes and attributes without much difficulty. You will learn about this in next few chapters. Before concluding this lecture, I would like to show you how to frame DN for one of the user in our sample directory structure. General structure of a DN is RDN plus path to base DN from RDN plus base DN. To understand it better, let's frame DN for our user with UID is equal to 101. As I mentioned earlier, first comes RDN of the entity for which we have to get DN. Secondly, the path to base DN from RDN. In the path first comes OU is equal to people. Then next comes O is equal to triplex ORG. And then comes C equal to US. We are stopping here because next parent entity is a part of base DN. And finally, we are appending base DN. This is the DN for our user, UAD is equal to 101. Note that if you want to get DN for C is equal to UK, there won't be any path between RDN and base DN because C equal to UK is the first entity after base DN. This concludes my lecture, and I hope now you have better understanding on how directory information tree is designed. Thank you, and I hope to see you in my next lecture.